Okay, listen, we're going to another whole nother question, and this is a whole other topic. It's actually the older topic. Remember back a few weeks ago when I introduced the Ashtanami and the Constitution of Medina? Uh, they're the two first areas that we've been trying to debunk, and we debunked it. I think we debunked the Ashtanami pretty well because we realized that that did not come from the 7th century. It did not come from Muhammad's hand. It came from the 16th century. And the Constitution of Medina, Constitution of Medina, that was only introduced in the 9th and 10th century. It did not come from the 7th century. And in debunking them, we then asked, well, why is it that Muslims want them so much? And here comes a good uh, a letter from Rajiv Abraham. And I want to read it uh, and because it's good to read, go back to things we've done earlier and to bring them up and show how relevant they are for today. And he says this, if this letter, and he's referring to the Astanami, document from St. Catherine's Monastery there in Egypt. This letter, he says, was authentic. It would be mentioned by Muhammad himself or his companions, at least in the Sahih Hadiths. So in other words, why in the Hadiths, which are the sayings of Muhammad from the 9th century, from Al-Buhari, Sahih Muslim, Ibn Al-Tirmi and the others, why is it they don't mention the Constitution? Why is it it cannot come from Muhammad's mouth? Now, as we realize, I don't believe they're true to begin with, but nonetheless, you would have been thought that would have been the first place that the Astanami would have been referred to. Muslim caliphs would have known that there are limits to what they can do vis-a-vis -vis Christians, Jews, and Zoroastrians, as this would have been their template for conduct towards other religions. The fact is that many Muslims are hearing about this document for the first time. Many Muslims, I think, around the world are, but not certainly not Muslims in Egypt. Egypt, they would have known about this because from the 16th century, this was a very popular document at St. Catherine's Monastery. Also, many other Christian churches, Zoos, and Zoroastrians would have copies of this, or at least would have been aware of this document, especially if it was mandatory for their own survival. Besides, Muhammad would have come across as a compassionate and trustworthy human being who kept his word, and which would have been a role model for Muslims all over the world. Muslims would have been holding up this as an example to show that Islam was indeed a peaceful religion. Obviously, this document is a fabrication. Well said, Rajiv Abraham, and I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head, and that's exactly the difficulty. If this really was a historical document, if it really had been written by Muhammad or by one of his, beside even Thabit, his secretary, and sent up there to St. Catherine's Monastery below Mount Sinai, there in the Sinai Peninsula in what is now today Egypt, if that were the case in the 7th century, then you can imagine that this would have been one of the greatest documents, or earliest documents, that would have had enormous impact right across the Christian world. The Christians would have got it out. Every Christian would have wanted hold of this because as soon as Islam gained control, as they went across, right across North Africa, and when they, uh, when you look at what they did across North Africa, this way, going over from India over here, over to Spain over here, this whole swath of land that came under the control was mostly all Christian. North Africa was all Christian. They would have wanted a document like that. They would have, that would have been popular. It had been copied and copied and sent from monastery to monastery, not just St. Catherine's Monastery. It had been in every one of the monasteries. All the churches would have used it because of the persecution of Christians by Islam. We don't see any of that. There's no reference to it. No one talked about it. The Zoroastrians who were in Persia over here, they would have wanted it because they would have been persecuted. They would have needed it as a document to support and defend them. The Jews as well. The Jews, listen, the Jews have not come, across, have not come off well by Islam in the last 1400 years. Don't you think they would have wanted a document like this? Absolutely. So this would have been one of the first documents they would have gone to. Yet we don't see any reference in any of their literature for this document. It is only introduced in the 16th century, in 1500 AD. So that's why Salim number first, who was such a persecutor of Christians, it was the, for that reason that the Egyptian Coptic uh, monks there in St. Catherine's Monastery needed this document to defend themselves. But it's fascinating that this is becoming only popular since 9-11. Isn't that interesting? I've only really heard about the Astanami and, uh, the, since 9-11, since 2001. 9-11-2001, the event that happened in 2001 here in the United States. And because of this new narrative that was just introduced after 9-11, now you, I'm sure people are going to say, yeah, there are many Muslims that were peaceful before that. Yes, I'm not saying that it was the first time that this, I, this narrative of peace came about, but it became popularized after 2001 that they suddenly wanted to then foist this astronomy 
to prove that Islam was a religion of peace. And that's why it stands to reason then it's now become popular today. The Constitution of Medina is another case in point. Why do you think the Constitution of Medina suddenly is all over the internet? Suddenly everybody wants to talk about it. Suddenly all the Muslims want to employ it and use it to prove because they really are finding, they're desperate to find any place that they can show that this man was a man of peace and Islam was a religion of peace and the Quran is a book of peace. Because you cannot look at this book and find it peaceful. You cannot look at Muhammad's life and find it peaceful when you look at the traditions and you cannot find the example of Islam around the world is peaceful outside of the Western example. The Western Islam is peaceful, but not the Middle East, and certainly not in most parts of the Muslim world. It is not a peaceful religion. It hasn't been. And so you can see the difficulty. They're, they need a, they need some type of document to help them out. That's why they've turned to the Astronomy. That's why they've turned to the, constant, the Constitution of Medina, in the hope that the rest of the world will then see them as a religion of peace. That's why they want so much desperately to... Uh, suggest that these are 7th century documents. But Rajiv Abraham, you're correct. It would have been the most popular letter around. It would have been all over. We would have had it in all our literature and people have been using it for the last 1400 years and not just since 2001. And I feel sorry for Muslims because Muslims are, I would be, if I was a Muslim, I would be desperate to try to prove that Islam is religion peace. The only place I know, the only religion I know, the only concept of peace is from this book, the New Testament. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the real man of peace. We don't need a document like the Astanami because we don't today. We have not and we aren't. If we are following Jesus properly, we do not use violence against other people. We are to put away the sword. For he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Matthew 26. It's right there in the gospel. Jesus was a man of peace. He never, ever asked us to use the sword. Even the one time the sword was used by Peter there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told Peter to put it away. Wouldn't even let him disciples defend him with the sword. And that's why it's so good to know that the whole paradigm of peace is unique to Christianity. Only Christianity, only the gospel says we're to love our enemies. No other piece of literature, no other religious concept. There's no other religious leader or scholar who comes up with that idea except Jesus Christ. So you can see why the Astanami and the Constitution Medina are so popular today. The problem is they're not historical. They just do not belong to the 7th century. We've debunked them, and that's where they need to lay. Okay, I hope that that's been great, Rajiv. I agree with you. I didn't have much response to you. I just support exa exactly what you put out. Well done. Good to have you come up with this idea, which needs to bring us back to board onto what we're going to. This is Jay, then, here in my office. Peaceful office, because we do follow who Jesus Christ is, and that's something that you can all follow, Wills. Come on home. God bless you. This is Jane. Over now.